To gain a clearer insight into reality, it is useful to focus on the three layers that we can distinguish in nature. If we look at the macro level, we see repeating patterns in nature that can be understood by formulating laws. All phenomena are reduced to the workings of elementary forces, particles and general mechanisms leading to the whole universe containing the galaxies, stars and planets. Here we mostly find the fields of physics and chemistry and the scientists working at fundamental knowledge issues. We then find ourselves at the meso level. At the meso level we see systems like forests, oceans and the climate that to a large extent seem to function independently of what human civilization does or doesn't. But at closer examination we do see that human actions can have far-reaching consequences. We need only think of the recently introduced term Anthropocene to understand that human influence has a significant global impact on Earth and her ecological systems. To give a sense of the presence of human civilization, here we see the density of artificial illumination during the night. Next to ecosystems and the like, social systems also have a place at the meso level. Think for instance of an economic or political system or a particular culture. Thirdly and lastly, there is the micro level. Here we find ourselves, human beings in interaction with nature and their cultural and societal conditions, as is studied in the domains of anthropology, psychology, economy, political science, sociology, and so forth. But also other biological beings can be considered to belong to this micro level. Think for instance of our co-primates, the apes, and of plants that appear to be capable of interacting actively with their environment, finding niches to increase their chance of survival and communicating in some way with each other when there's danger to give some examples. So why is it useful to make the distinction between the macro, meso and micro level? One important reason is that it can help us to get a better understanding of what the seemingly simple but actually quite comprehensive concept of nature entails and what our relation to nature is. We can say that at the macro level things are mostly independent of us. It doesn't matter whatever interventions mankind might carry through, nature on this level will still follow its own course. At the meso and micro level, however, human influence certainly does play a role. For instance, if we disturb Earth's ecosystems too much, we might induce a tipping point beyond which it is impossible to return to a state that is crucial for human life to continue. And if people lose their faith and there is no trust in the economy, the economic system may clash on a national or even a global level. Or, focusing on the micro level, if people lose faith in themselves, they might lose the power to give active form and shape to their own lives. In the same way, other higher order animals might lose the capacity to defeat natural disasters when their resilience is broken, and maybe even the capacity of plants to give form and shape to their existence is comparable to a certain extent. So what we see is that causality takes different shapes at the different levels. Whereas at the macro level there is only external causality, at the meso and micro level actor causality increasingly starts to play a role too. People are not just objects that are fully determined by forces of nature or biology. They are able to influence their lives to a large extent. And, fortunately or not, they also appear to have a large influence on the natural systems at the meso level that form their surroundings. Insight into the differences between the macro, meso and micro levels can help to gain more understanding of what our influence might be and get to grips with it. This insight can also help us to take a more systematic and inclusive approach to the relation between the natural and social sciences, thus enhancing an interdisciplinary approach that is so much needed to study the so-called wicked problems we are confronted with. The more complex the problems are getting, the more difficult it becomes to isolate and investigate phenomena separately, without loss of understanding their role and function within the larger system they are part of. Acknowledging that nature is stratified or layered, and that at different levels different types of causality are at play, or that different types of causality might even interact at certain levels, we can hopefully gain a better understanding of the complexity involved in the grand challenges of our time.